click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about interoperation parallelism. First we will know what is an interoperation parallelism and then we will discuss two methods by which we can afford this interoperation parallelism. The first one is the pipeline parallelism and the second one is being the independent parallelism. Interoperation parallelism is in part of an intra-query parallelism. When we know that we have started with an intra-query, that means we are inside a query. And it doesn't matter that the queries are performed with other queries sequentially or parallelly. Now we are more considered with the operations that are to be done inside a query. So the query can have many operations. Some operations are long and some are short just as the read. Now the write or the modification operation inside a query takes a quite long time. Now if we can have that all the queries or the inter queries and be performed sequentially or parallelly, then we can have the operations inside a particular query can be done in two ways. The first one is an intra operation which is not our concern for today because that is for an operation and how they can be parallelized. We are first considering that the execution of parallel operation. Now how can we operate parallelly the execution of different different type of operations together so that the one operation's execution will not affect the other operation. So the first condition that we need to satisfy is that any operation's result can be taken by other operation but they will not hamper the other operation's result if they are concurrently executing. That means for the interoperation, it is the execution of the parallel operation. Now how can we process these operations? It can be processed in different type of processor but it will be different for because we are in an intra query problem. If we just divide our query or a single query into different processor for the operation, maybe the result will be much less computation time but it will result in a higher concentric computation because all the results from each of these professors now need to be combined together to have the final query result which is not desirable so we better make it inside a processor and divide the task in such a way that they can perform in execution of a concurrent nature. Now the interoperation query becomes extremely important because of the parallelism that we can provide to give the illusion of a multi-programming nature. As we can know that this interoperation is mainly defined with the operation that one operation's result, say for the instant that one read operation there and one other is write operation there. So obviously the operation A is dependent on operation B in such a way that other than we are writing a value, we cannot read the value or the vice versa that reading without the value we cannot modify the value. So this results or the operations cannot be done run in the parallelly. So we need to partition the operations in a logical way so that we can perform the concurrent executions of this operation. And this type of parallelism in nature is known as an interoperation parallelism. Now we can achieve this interoperation parallelism in two ways. The first way is in pipeline parallelism. As we know for the pipeline, if we have say operation A and operation B pipelined with each other. Now if they are pipelined, that means the operations A can carry out its own operation and B can carry out its own operation with some of the results on A can be computed and given to the B or fit to the B so that they can compute based on the result of AI. It is not mandatory that AI is need to be written to a temporary variable or any variable that will be considered as a mediated disk. So now there is no need to write to temp AI so that I can use the BI on temp. 
So now we can have the AI directly be fit to BI so that we can have the AI or this AJ to AK continuously operating while AI's result is being fed to BI. So these two advantages of pipeline parallelism, the first one is that we can have the result of AI to be fed to BI and the second one is we can continue with AJ to AK where j is greater than i for operation a so in this way we can achieve the pipeline parallelism now the pipeline parallelism is not a particular parallelism for partitioning but it is useful for a sequential operation way where some of the result or the intermediate result is needed by other operations so it is done in a sequential evaluation just like the way it will be done inside a parallel nature now when the multiprocessor or the multi-parallel operations are considered, pipeline is taken evaluation for that part only that the result is not need to be written on intermediate disk. So the stable storage is becoming the pipelining itself for every result on the each part of operations. So if the operations are long, all the parts can run concurrently while having one result being fed to the other operation of other transaction. So in this way, this interoperation parallelism can be achieved through the pipeline parallelism. Now let us take an example and see that how we can perform the joining of algorithm within this interoperation parallelism. Say suppose three have R2, R1 and R3, three relations with each other that we need to join naturally. Now we need another relation R4 to be joined with it. Now with the pipeline parallelism, what we can do, we can first do this R1 and R2 in a pipeline P1. So P1 is having R1 and R2 joining. So now we are taking in a temporary variable R1 join R2. No, it is to mistake by that temporary variable is not an intermediate disk where we are writing the result. We are just storing the value of R1 and R2 so that we can be available with the attributes of R1 and R2. So to join with R3 another in a pipeline. Now the pipeline P2 and P1 is running concurrently with each other while the joining will be done by the P1 in a later way or concurrently with the joining of R3 with the stem because now my R1 and R2 are available with their attributes as the stem variable they are storing. So it is not storing the result but only storing the attributes of R1 and R2 so that we can have the join with this R3. See in another pipeline where the P2 is performing the R3 with R1 and R2 availability, then we can have the R4 join with this temp. Now the temp is storing the attributes of R1, R2 and R3 all. Here we can say that until and unless we are waiting for the finish of joining R1 and R2, we cannot perform the pipeline P2 to join. So it is not in the case of this pipeline parallelism where we can join this P1 on the R1, R2 as a part of the tuple or say three or four tuples has been generated with all the attributes. So the tuples and the attributes can be again used with this R3 where we can join the R3 with the attributes as well as the tuples. That means the tuples will be supplied from this P1 to the P2 and now even if the R1 R2 joining is not finished it can have joined with R3 and R4 too. That means by the time that R1 and R2 will finish his joining to the whole tuples belonging to R1 and R2 R4 will be joined with R3 that will be joined with R1 and R2 to some extent at the pipelining. But see the pipeline works in this way.
that first we need some of the results of pipeline P1 to be fetched to P2 so that it can continue and some of the P2 to be fetched to P3 so that it can continue. So we need to wait for some time for the first and initial pipeline to begin its execution so that we can have in sequentially with this P1, P2, P3. So that is differed from the actual paralleling nature which wants that every operations can parallelly execute with each other. Now also in P1, P2, P3 we can see from this one P1 and P2 can parallelly execute, P2 and P3 can parallelly execute but for some extent the previous pipeline's result is needed to continue with the next pipeline. That means the R1, R2 result, say four tuples are needed. By the time six tuples are generated, four tuples will be given to this R4. So this way it will continue its execution parallelly. Like sum is given to it, it is like a relay race that it is following with the pipelining parallelism. So it is useful for when we have the sequential access of data inside an interoperation. Say for a query which is having the operations like first we need to select then we can modify. Then it is good for use this pipeline parallelism because other than selecting the relation we cannot move to this modification. So some of the part that is selecting we can go and fit the data to the modification operation and next the part on the by the time it will be selected first operation on the modification will be done. So this way pipeline parallelism balances this too. Now when the type or the levels of parallelism is high that means when there are more pipelines then it is not an useful of an paralleling nature rather than it is used for a sequential evaluation. Say suppose there are p n number of pipelining for which some of the results of p1 to P2, to P3, to P4, to Pn, in this way it will be evaluated. So now when there is lesser number of pipelines, say one or two, then it is used for the interoperation parallelism as good. Basically the interoperation parallelism uses this type of parallelism because of the nature that it's avoid result relating to the intermediate disk and update it thoroughly. So in this way we can achieve the interoperation parallelism through the pipeline parallelism. The next way it can perform is an independent parallelism. Now in the independent parallelism which is a true sense of parallel in nature that means every operations will be performed in execution with each other. That means simultaneously and independently they will perform their operation and finally as a result they will be joined as the final operation. See for the same joining R1 join with R2 join with R3 and R4 can be done with independent parallelism in a different different way. First way is to done the temp1 as the parallel nature to join this R1 and R2 and temp2 to join R3 and R4. Now what we can have as a result we can join this temp1 and temp2 as the final pipeline. Other than we can join in this way that in temp1 we are having R1 and R2. In temp2 we are having R3 with temp and in temp4 we are having R4 with temp2. These two type of independent parallelisms are different in nature. For the first one we can have two parallel processings. One is joining R1, R2, another is joining R3 and R4. But as we see that the independent parallelism gives us the final results when all will be calculated. But here we cannot have with this R1, R2 and R3, R4 as the final joining. We need to wait for these two operations to complete and use their result to have the final joining on them. So that is independent parallelism the term is defying itself only because now we are having two parallel sequences and finally joining them together.
So the result of the previous relation or the operation is needed in the last one. So that is also one kind of parallelism, but it is not a high degree of parallelism. Now let us look at the second case. Now we can have three parallel operations. The first one is having R1 with R2, while this result as temp1 is needed in temp2, where we can have this R3 with temp1. Now what we are having, this parallelism needs that all the results, they cannot perform together. So this is a lower degree of parallelism where it is parallel in nature but some way the temp1 is needed to perform this R3 and R4 and it is the better one between these two because now we can perform this R1, R2 and R3, R4 joining at least parallelly independent of each other. And finally the result is joined together. So in this way the independent parallelism is also not providing a higher degree of parallelism. It uses where the low level of parallelism is needed because the interoperation is again belongs to a part of an intra query that we have already discussed that it's needed somewhere a low level of parallelism whereas the intra operation needed a much higher level of parallelism. So now we can have one result of the operation in the other one in independent parallelism too. So that is all for the inter-operation parallelism within pipeline and independent parallelism. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.